workshop with Bullhead City Elementary School Board on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Uh, roll call, Corey Burgess here. Doug Lutz here. Jeannie Borland here. Brandy Dubois here. Charlene Diaz here. All, pre all present. Uh, item 1.3, our policies. Dr. Stewart. Uh, Mr. President and board members, uh, as you requested last month, we're going to start working through the policies. Um, we put up here for visual purposes the two policy books, volume one and volume two, so you can see this will be a rather lengthy task to work through all of them. <laughs> we thought that we thought the the visual might be pretty effective. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and right now, this is the only up to date. Uh, printed version of our policies and Kim's been working through them and comparing them to the online policies uh, in policy bridge to make sure that everything's matching and those kinds of things so um, okay so the first thing we're going to look at is policy uh, a which is the mission statement and I thought I was pretty, uh, pretty familiar with our policies but I will tell you when I opened the book and saw this one or actually went on uh, on the website, I went, oh, no, 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 no. So um, this is the one that's officially in the books right now. However, for several years now, the district has had another mission statement and vision statement or belief statements that were developed uh, with a committee of employees and all kinds of other folks uh, as a result of administrators being part of a statewide training thing. So Kim, if you'll scroll down to the bottom. What is in brown here is what has been posted in our district uh, for, I'm thinking probably eight years or so, eight or nine years. Um, and uh, so I'm offering that up to you as a consideration of uh, making it for the time being anyway, our mission and belief statements, uh, because these are the kinds of things that I would guess if you wanted to change that you'd wanna have lots of people involved in and, and some other things. So these have been the functioning mission and belief statements in the district for about eight years. But we've actually have in our manual what's above it. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> that's actually in our manual. Okay. That's where there's a typo in the first word, well, in the environment under the heading here. Then it says, is to provide a student-centered environment. Oh yeah, environment is spelled wrong. Oh yes, sorry. And it's spelled correctly down here, so I think it's just up there. Oh. Yeah, it's a typo. Yeah. So we'll fix that. Any other problems? We want this updated with the correct information. Right. Okay, so you want so and, and our intent is anything that you're looking at tonight would be on next month's agenda as actual um, you know new business. Anything that's a policy will have to have two readings. Anything that's a regulation, of course, you can approve the same uh, you know the same night. Although you probably don't want to approve regulations before you approve policies, so uh, we might delay the re regulations for a month or something. So, uh, okay. So um, uh, you want to you want to update? Okay. Yes, update this. Okay. Okay, Kim. Next one, please. They should be in front of you. So we're looking at AC next. Oh. Okay, you're not going to get on camera. Yes, I'm sorry. Come on, I'm sorry. behind. I just don't think we have AC. We just don't have AC. We have ACE. Okay. Well, that's okay. We can go It should be on your screen. It's on your screen. Okay. Oh, here it is. It's yeah. like third to last on my list. And I'll remind yeah. you. Yeah, it's third yeah, to last good. one. Okay. And I will remind you, even though I sent it in the uh, in my uh, memo to you, uh, any of these policies where there's the C in the circle after the letters, 
um, those were the ones that were uh, pro uh, provided to all the districts in the state who are part of ASBA as the wording that had been vetted by attorneys to make sure that they uh, were compliant with all of these laws and regulations that you see listed at the end of each of the policies. Um, because the whole idea of policy is that it is how districts are supposed to carry out the laws that are passed by the legislature. Uh, uh, and any federal laws and any uh, regulations that get uh, developed at the state level as a, uh, as a result of state law. So anytime you see the legal references on these policies, those are the laws that are being, uh, being addressed by this specific policy. So then it's always a good idea to have an attorney or a set of attorneys go through the wording to make sure that the policy uh, is in compliance with the law one way or the other. So uh, the one you're seeing there and what's in black and then the little references in blue are the current policy. The only reason I've given you some uh, opportunities for alternative wording for you to consider if you want down at the bottom in brown or not brown in various colors uh, is because in the workshops that I've been attending relative to oh. Title IX compliance and those things, there's been some discussion about how districts have altered their wording of this policy slightly to, uh, to recognize um, uh, other, uh, other protected groups. Yeah. So there's, you don't have to change it at all, it's up to you, but I thought you might want to see some alternative wording that has been adopted by other districts, just for comparison. The, yeah, those were, uh, the, I just pulled them randomly from, some, from three other districts how they worded this particular policy. And in each case, the, they then, when they reworded it, sent, or had um, their attorneys review the wording before they adopted the policy. Has the SBA made any recommendation on this? They haven't. No, the, the one, that, the, the one that, that is in black that is uh, the one we currently have is the current one for ASBA. Any comments? Thank you. And these have been vetted by attorneys. Yes, but we would still want our attorney to look at it. Any attorney will say, make sure your own attorney reviews things. That's just what's nice about the ASBA because it's already been done. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. As long as they've been vetted, I doesn't matter to me. I checked mine. Yeah, I turned mine off after jeans were in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, brown, the orange, on the, whatever. On the, on the back page. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I like pumpkin. That's a good. Yes. That's a good explanation. Pumpkin. I like that. Color. I just stick with orange. <laughs> Name right there. Okay, so you'd like to, you'd like to, us to bring that that version next time, after we have it checked by the attorney. Okay, sure. excellent. Thank you. <coughs>
Uh, let's see. Okay, E C A B A. Um, okay, this is we currently do not have this policy in our policy book. Our district has uh, had in practice for a number of years, probably ten or twelve years, They're coming out backwards. Uh, that uh, employees wear ID badges. And so I was a little surprised, and it's the reason that in the draft handbook that I gave to you that that section is red, because I tried to back all of the sections in the handbook with policy or law or something when I could. Um, that's when I found out that we did not have this policy. Now, uh, it has been applied rather inconsistently in the last few years. Uh, I did say at the beginning of last year that since we had been doing it for years, we needed to continue to do it and we needed to enforce it because I thought we had the policy. Um, so this is totally up to you all. If you want to have a policy about badges, uh, we do have practices at each of our sites for visitors. Uh, we have to do that for safety reasons. You know, if there are visitors on campus, we need to know who they are and they need to have identification on them in, in case we have a fire drill or we have some emergency. So uh, this formalizes that piece. But in terms of staff IDs, um, it's up to you all if you want us to do that, if have a policy and enforce it, uh, or let it be like it is where we do it, but maybe don't have a policy, or not enforce it and not have it at all. I, I would just say leave it the way it is. I mean, the visitors we understand because we don't know who's coming on campus, but. Yeah. The staff knows the staff, and so you're not getting a, a doppelganger coming in there and <laughs> somebody. But uh, I, I, that's just one more thing that we have to look after, one more thing we have to check on, and I'd just rather not, personally. Okay just leave it where it is. Leave it like it is. So yeah. we have them, but it's not an enforceable policy. Yeah. Okay, the thank you. Doing it. <clears throat> okay, so then that kind of skips then any of the others related to that. Yay! Ooh. Yay! Okay. And then you can tell me when we get to the handbook if you want me to leave that section in the handbook or not. That's E A E B and Oh yeah, we'll go clear down to the first scanned one. So I'm sorry these then are a little bit out of order because those were the ones that I had put notes on for you. They're just backwards. They're kind of backwards. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, we pull from the bottom there in order. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, school district's legal status, this is policy AA, and, and it just tells us what our name is, and golly gee, you can see how surprised I was to learn that the word elementary is not in our official name, even though I see it written this way every time I get on ADE website and look at the financial stuff. In my head, I think I just inserted the word elementary. So all those logos I had you approve last month, oops, <laughs> they're not any good either. Uh, but this is our official name, so. I think this, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, Of course you all can change it. <clears throat> I think we'd have to go through some legal steps probably yeah. to get it changed. I kind of like having an elementary on our logo though because it does differentiate And we still, yeah, we still can. Yeah, we still can. We still can, so. I think this all went back to the date of trying to unify all the schools yeah. is where this name change, if I remember correctly. No, this is the original. All the way this back. This is all the way back 75 years. Wow. Bullhead City School District yeah. number well, 15. It's worked out long. Let's just keep on <laughs> going. I agree. Okay. Do other school districts have like the number in their yes. name? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they all have the name. I just like, I see us use it, but I don't really see other schools. Yes. Use it. Well, well Now this one is really interesting to me um, uh, because it's the very it's it's the legal uh, boundaries. I will tell you, I tried to find a map to see if uh, to to you know look at it because this kind of stuff interests me. To try to find each of those spots, could not find a map that showed those those actual spots. Um, uh, we had to go. Lance helped me go to the. I uh, went to the uh, county school site superintendent site and we got the we got a big map of the whole county and where each of the schools in the county where their boundaries are and then i just took a, a clipping of it you know a, a cut version for our handbook uh, i had no idea our district went clear up to highway 93 uh clear up by uh white hills 
obviously we don't have any kids who come here from there. Uh, they must be open enrollment someplace else. And then in this policy or in this uh, description, I also thought it was interesting that it says this consolidates Bullhead City School District and the south half of the lapsed school stole district number 28. What is that? I have no idea. The only thing I can figure is it must have been part of this up here. There used to be a school district a long time There must ago. have been a school district up there a long time ago. I couldn't even, I, I Googled the word stole and couldn't even find it. I have never even heard that. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit more history of our district. Nothing we need to change there? <laughs> okay, looking good. Would we know what to do with it anyway? <laughs> What was, which was that number, <laughs> What was that number? That letter? A what? A8 A8. Oh, okay. Dashy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is ABA, Community Involvement in Education. And uh, where it says adopted date of manual adoption, uh, my guess is based on institutional memory. Uh, is that all of these policies were reviewed in, I think, in 2006, 2007, uh, and maybe not even reviewed, but they were presented to the board and whatever, and they just didn't put a date in there uh, for ad adoption. So um, I don't think this is 75 years old, but I wouldn't swear to that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Okay. ABAA is parental involvement. just the, the broadest terms possible. I mean, so we want, that basically tells us as much as we can get them, get them. We try, so, we try. You know, if, all, if all of them could be broadest terms possible, that's kind of nice. <clears throat> Direction on that one on A B A A. Leave it alone. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Leave it alone. Thank you. Yeah, we need to go back one, don't we? No, nope, that's the next one. A C dash R. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, no, we did the sexual harassment ones. That's why you don't have them in here because we just approved. You just approved those last month. Um, and so uh, this one is um, simply the uh, a regulation. Yes, the same wording. Huh? It does. Yeah. It has a lot of the same wording. Yeah. yeah, it has a lot of the same wording. Leave it alone. Anyone wanting to change in that one? No. Okay. And the form that goes with it? Yeah, the form that goes with it is the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Don't see anything in there we need to change, right? No, nope, no. Nope. Okay, leave that alone. Nope. Okay, and this is uh, educational philosophy and school district mission. Not quite sure why this one is also called mission when you have a mission statement at the beginning, but uh, this may just have a little more detail. Thank you. 
Any changes? All right, looks good. That's the last one, right? I think so. Awesome timing. So these were with other things here? There are a few exhibits in there. Uh, what things are you looking at, Brandy? Oh, I, don't, I have ACE. That was with the, yeah. okay. So then, this was, was this the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not the yeah. shortest section, but it's pretty much on there in my list, but they weren't on there. Uh, no, that's part, that's part of the meeting. That's part yeah, of our. Uh, no. okay. Oh, OK. Yeah. Those will be part of the action, yeah. new business. Um, that's one of the smaller sections. There is one section that has only one policy in it, but it's not coming up soon. So <laughs> we'll be through that in your two years. No time. <laughs> easy, Gene. You'll be able to get through that whole thing two years. You know, it's easy. All right. Do we have any other uh, items for the workshop that need to be discussed on the policies? Uh, if not, we need a motion to adjourn our workshop. Make a motion we adjourn our workshop. I second. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess. Aye. Doug Ruck. Aye. Jeannie Borland. Aye. Brandy Dubois. Aye. Charlene Diaz. All right, we are adjourned. <clears throat> Before we get started in that meeting, Doug, I think it'll work really well if you just go the order right after me so we don't have to worry about who pauses and votes next. <laughs> so you'll be voting after okay. me each time, okay, Doug? Okay, I'll vote after you, Corey, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, we have just a few minutes before we start. I'm going to go grab a drink. Oh, there you go.
I call to order the regular meeting of the Bullhead City Elementary School Board on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. Roll call. Uh, Corey Burgess here. Hi, I've got Gluts here. Jeannie Borland here. Brandy Dubois here. Charlene Diaz here. Citizens present, please sign your name in the back of the attendance sheet. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and <clears throat> Call to the publics. Uh, we don't have any submitted at this time. Item 2.6, adoption of the agenda. We have a motion. <clears throat> Doug Glock, so move. Second, Jeannie Borland. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye, Doug Glock. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, item 2.7, superintendent reports. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members, uh, thank you. Um, I was pleased, and I'm sure you're pleased, to see the reports that have to do with enrollment continue to go up. Um, kind of wish they'd done that a little earlier because it affects what's going on with our budget, but I'm really pleased to see those numbers going back up. Um, and the only other thing from uh, the, the reports that I wanted to point out and to see if you had any questions or comments about uh, was the uh, budget-related information report and the table that I shared with you about what might be happening relative to the enrollment stabilization grant. Um, you can see those numbers vary widely um, in terms of what we might or might not receive for enrollment stabilization. So I didn't know if you might have questions about those. We are supposed to hear next Thursday on Thanksgiving what our numbers are. Um, neither Mrs. Lott nor I are holding our breath that we hear that day, but um, certainly by the Monday when we return and then we're going to be uh, scrambling to make sure we've got things moved and, and whatever it is we need to do. Relative to that, as part of my updates, I uh, will tell you that it is very possible that we will be able to replace our computer servers, all of our computer servers that we've been talking about since I came on board a year and a half ago uh, that are desperately in need of it, and even more so now. There's a big drain on them since we have so much virtual stuff going on. Uh, James and his crew have managed to hold them together with bailing wire and chewing gum and anything else they can find. So um, the strain on them is right now is related to COVID. And um, even though they're old, they've been doing pretty well until this year. So we're hopeful that we can do that. The second thing that we're uh, building into that budget is we've had multi-point computer labs in our school sites for probably seven, eight, nine years. Um, and what that is is one station and then several, or one computer and then several uh, student stations attached to that one computer. They've become outdated and they uh, uh, don't do well with, the, with Google and the things that we're using these days. The good news is that we don't have to replace everything. We can replace the, what you and I think of as the hard drive, uh, the actual brains, but continue to use the, the monitors and keyboards that we have and um, uh, reestablish those uh, in all of our sites all six of our sites that use them for $57,000. Pretty good price, and we uh, can, can do that with our uh, enrollment money. So uh, we're trying to do that as well. The other news item that is as of four o'clock today, we have another positive case of COVID at Fox Creek. So uh, uh, we have put that class on quarantine they will be able to return on Wednesday when we come back. So they'll only miss two days of school. Um, and, and they were being notified. That's one reason that Dr. Bond is not here. Uh, she and her crew were staying to make sure they made calls to all of those families before they left today. Any questions on the report? 
Uh, Dr. Stewart, Doug Lutz, uh, what are we looking at cost-wise for the servers, and uh, will the funds be coming from capital outlay? No, we would be, uh, Doug, we're trying to build that into the enrollment stabilization grant funding. Um, what they've done with that, uh, originally they had some pretty strict red tape attached to that. But I think they recognized that the short time frame that we're all going to be under in all the districts in the state uh, will make that a little difficult. So they have uh, said that we can use uh, the first $500 per student of that money uh, pretty much for anything that will offset whatever it is we need to run our schools this year. We will still have to have documentation for the auditors and you know we can't just be crazy with it, which we wouldn't be anyway, but we're going to use those funds. So it will not come out of capital. It would come out of uh, enrollment stabilization grant funding if we can make that work. Great, thank you. And uh, you did ask Doug the cost. Uh, we think replacement of, I think it's three big servers. Is that right, James? Three? Four servers, 275,000. So this will be very nice to be able to do them all at once. Then the current equipment, which is still usable, but is 10 years old, we would move to uh, Sunrise and put there as a backup. We've been struggling with that whole idea um, for a couple of years, even before I came on board, because the district doesn't have a good backup system for that. And so the, um, the uh, performance auditors we're happy at when we first started talking about replacing our servers that then we would have a backup system. So what it would just be kind of mothballed and then a couple of times a year they would go up and start it up and make sure everything's working. So that if something happened to our server room here, we could be back up and running in about 72 hours as opposed to one week or two weeks. Or worse like flex stuff. Or worse like flex stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this, is, this is a really good opportunity for us to do that and not have to take it out of our capital funds. Any other questions? All right, <coughs> moving on to item 2.8, uh, donations. Once again, we wanna thank our community for stepping up and donating to our schools. Uh, the, the district office, uh, we had miscellaneous school supplies, estimated cost of $4,000 from our Walmart. Uh, 5,000 disposable face masks from the United Way, estimated cost $3,750. Uh, Desert Valley, re uh, check to Mrs. Roy's Pete's Rock and Reader Club for the K-4 in the amount of $350 from Colorado River Women's Council. A check for $60 from the Blackboard Give Giving Fund of Your Cause. 190 red uniform sweatshirts, hooded, zippered, and logoed from the Legacy Foundation, estimated cost of $2,850. Uh, two cases of water from the Daly family, estimated cost $17.96. A $600 donation check from Artist Studios Grant or to Holly Hamilton from River Valley Artist Guild. Uh, Diamondback School, 80 bottles of water from Anna and Cameron Pruitt, estimated $8. Crayons, whiteboard markers, and folders uh, cost $365 from Donor's Choice. Uh, so once again, our community is stepping up and, and really helping our schools out and uh, we do greatly appreciate all of that. Uh, item 2.9, board member updates. Do we have any updates today? No, okay, moving on. Uh, item three point, uh, item three, uh, the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to adopt the consent agenda as submitted? I move to approve the consent agenda, agenda I, as is. I second, Brandy Dubois. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Doug Lutz. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, item 4.1, the corrected IGA for technology. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President and board members, um, you approved this policy a couple of months ago. Uh, when they got ready to take it to the high school board, uh, the uh, gentleman who was also on the same agenda to become their uh, lead tech noticed that there was one place where uh, we had cut and paste BCESD when it should have been uh, CRUS, CRUHSD. And uh, so that's the only correction. So I'm just recommending that you approve the correction. Any questions? 
Then I move we approve item 4.1, the corrected IGA for technology. I second, Brandy. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye. Doug Lutz? Aye. Jeannie Borland? Aye. Brandy Dubois? Aye. Charlene Diaz? So moved. Item 5.1, the CRAH EBT agreement and declaration. Dr. Stewart. Uh, members of the board, Mr. President, you notice that the date on here is December 10th, 2019. Uh, these were the changes that were uh, made by the uh, Board of Trustees for our health consortium uh, last year. Um, we thought we had presented all of this to the board. We can't find any record of that. And so we wanted to make sure that we got that done at this point. We know from the discussions that took place last year with uh, the trust board and uh, with some other experts who were here at some of those meetings, <coughs> excuse me, that this is not truly a complete document. So that board knows, uh, knew at the time and knows now that there, you know, that there are things that need to be corrected. But the changes that were made in it at the time were just to get us through the year. And then of course COVID hit and the board has not met uh, since. So we wanted to be sure that we got this in front of you, got it in our minutes and had the appropriate signatures. Any questions on item four or 5.1? <clears throat> then I move that we approve the CRAH EBT agreement and declaration as presented. I second that, Jeannie Borland. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye. Doug Lutz? Aye. Jeannie Borland? Aye. Brandy Dubois? Aye. Charlene Diaz? So moved. Item 5.2, rescind policy K JKA corporal punishment. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members, this is an existing policy uh, relative to corporal punishment. Um, uh, our district has not employed corporal punishment for almost 20 years now. And uh, so needless to say, I was a little surprised to see this policy still in the book. Uh, this is a first reading, so you're not taking action on it. Uh, but then uh, the next, uh, at our next meeting, when you look at it again, there will also be the associated uh, regulation and uh, exhibits. For that but i recommend that uh, when the time comes next month that you rescind this policy uh, and get it off our books so that is just a first reading we don't take any action at this point um, if you have any <coughs> concerns or questions about it we can handle that at the second reading um, item 5.3 uh, rescind policy jig married students i don't think i need to say much about this one <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that is also a first reading, so we will handle that <laughs> at our next meeting also. Uh, item 5.4, employee handbook. Dr. Stewart. Uh, I came to the realization uh, a couple of months ago when we were uh, hiring a, a new employee that while each of our school sites has an employee handbook and has had for years, as long as I can remember, that there is not one at the district level. And, um, and it's kind of hard to expect new employees who don't happen to work at a school site to behave themselves and do the things they're supposed to do if they don't know what those things are. So I started pulling together from the site uh, handbooks the things that seem to apply to the whole district. Um, and then uh, our intent is, my intent is, that uh, if and when you approve this, <coughs> that it become the basis for uh, it become consistent for all of our sites and all of our uh, departments. And then each site can add the pieces that are site specific uh, to, you know, to this for their sites. Um, so uh, it's a draft. I was hoping that you'd had some time to look through it, find things that you thought should or shouldn't be there, um, and, um, uh, you know, and have some time to go through it. So. Uh, I tried to make sure that every single item was either backed up with a law or a policy or a regulation um, because those are, the, those are the things by which we operate. And we want our employees to know that we don't, you know, we didn't just make up these rules on a rainy Saturday uh, when we couldn't go outside, that there really is a basis for uh, the procedures and the processes that we use in our district. 
Did we have any uh, questions on the employee ha handbook for the district? Well, if I understood you correctly, you said to leave it the way it is. So we do have them, but we don't have it backed up they're by policy. Either. So they're not required. Okay. We, do, we do like to have people do it. Our sites tell us that kids really feel better when they see somebody with that badge on. You know, they feel safer. So, you know, we, we'll continue. But I put it in red because I thought I needed to have some guidance from you whether to leave it in here. Um, and we could even without a policy. So it's up to you if you want me to leave it in or not. I don't see any changes. Hey. And I think cloth face coverings, is that something that if we're ever allowed to not wear them again in our lifetime? Any of these would change based on any changes that you make in policy as we go through this book or these books. Um, I just was going with what we have in policy right now. So that's just going to tie to that GBGBR, which expires at the end of the school year, right? At the end of June at this point, yes. Yeah, at the end of, yeah, at the year, end so. of June, yeah, at this point. Any other questions? Okay. Right. <clears throat> then I move that we improve the employee handbook as presented. I second that, Randy Dubois. <laughs> All in favor, aye. Corey Burgess. Doug Glutz, aye. Jeannie Borland, aye. Aye, Randy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Thank you, we'll work on getting this out in uh, January. Item 5.5, .5, the resignation of Delma Bond, teacher at Diamondback. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members, you have in front of you the letter of resignation from Delma Bond, who is a kindergarten teacher at Des uh, Diamondback School. Did we have any questions? Then I make a motion that we accept Delma Bond's resignation. I second that motion, Charlene Aye. Diaz. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Doug Lutz. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 5.6, liquidation of damages clause of the contract with Delma Bond. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members, um, there is that clause in everyone's contract uh, if they uh, res resign before the end of the contract. Uh, it's, your, uh, it's your wish is what, how you want us to handle that. Any questions? My feelings are still the same as it is with any of them. Uh, when we we have that in our contract for a reason, um, so I am I believe that we should invoke the liquidation of damages clauses. Um, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was. Just <laughs> the um wasn't supposed to be there. I'll make the motion. <laughs> I move that we um, invoke. What is it? Invoke. 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 Thank you. Invoke <laughs> the um, liquidation of damages clause of contract with Delma Bond. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess. Aye. Doug Lutz. Aye. Jeannie Borland. Aye. Brandy Dubois. Aye. Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 6.1, future topics. Uh, other than we have the policies down here already listed. Um, the meeting for next month for governing board self-evaluation and superintendent evaluation. Do we have any other future topics that we'd like added? Okay. Those would be the only ones. Item 6.2, upcoming board events. There is the ASBA new board orientation conference, December 2nd uh, through the 4th. And we have people registered yes, ready we to do. go. So great. Uh, we're good on that. Any other upcoming board events? No. Nope. Item 6.3, date, time, and location for future meetings. The recommendation for this. Uh, is to change the date of the, de of the December meeting due to the required budget revisions, which has to be filed by December 15th. Uh, what days are we good with? Okay. Um, I cannot do the 8th through the 10th because of um, high school 
concerts. I actually didn't do that. Mm. What day was it? What day are you asking for? Oh, I was just saying I can't do these days. Oh. We just have to do it either the 14th or earlier. Before the 14th? No, before the 15th. I have to be able to file the paperwork on the 15th. And okay. since the 8th through the 11th, that really leaves us the 1st through the 4th. Or the 14th. Or the 14th. Uh, do we know what day the high school meeting is? Oh. Because we're having a problem again tonight. <laughs> They're having a special meeting right now. Their normal meeting is on the 7th. <laughs> their normal meet, their regular meeting would be on the 7th. Okay. With wrestling being postponed again, I'm available anytime. <laughs> again, yeah. So you think they would have theirs on the seventh? That's their normal meeting. Yes. Or, uh, that would so that would only be the first Monday. The I'm. Yeah, that's the first Monday. They don't usually meet on the first Monday, do they? Uh, second I thought Monday they would be the fourteenth. Yeah, they would meet on the fourteenth, the second Monday. Please do. Yeah. I, I, but if they do. Well, they're usually on the second Monday, so I'm a little concerned. But uh, Lance is going to go check the calendar since he has to keep it straight for both boards. So we're thinking maybe the 14th, right? Is that why we're checking or is that what you guys were wanting? Well, she's not available the whole week before that. Yeah, so, I yeah. Do Monday or Friday, yeah. So the, the 7th, the 11th, the 14th, or the 1st through 4th. I did that kind of weird. 1st through 4th, 7th, 11th, or 14th are when you're available. And first, first through fourth is really going to push us on budget because part of that budget adjustment is going to depend on what we find out from ESG. And remember, this is going to be a long meeting. It'll be a long meeting. Yeah. Doug, are, <laughs> Doug, what day are you not, are you, are you available any of these dates? Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's not a PD day. Because uh, it's a PD day, I'll be a professional Are you in town? Yeah, my Okay. Okay, Lance says the high school districts chose at their last meeting that their next meeting would be the 14th. Okay. We'd be okay. We could we could do what we need to do by the seventh. Yeah. I don't know because I have to take family back to the airport. Eleven, twelve. I think I would probably be better off doing five thirty. The other option, if you wanted to think about Friday, uh, Jen, is that Friday a uh, PD Friday? Oh. The eleventh. We have the calendar on. No, there. it's not the no, and that's not a PD Friday. The PD Fridays are the first Friday, that's unless you wanted to do like an that early. You could do early on Friday the 11th. You wouldn't have to wait till five or five thirty if you wanted to do the 11th. I'm okay with the seventh, whatever you want. I'm on vacation that week. Oh. Uh. I have use it or lose it Does the seventh work for everybody? Seventh, yeah. Okay. So let's do, do, Doug, you good with the seventh? You might miss the workshop, yeah. but you can make the meeting. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Mm. All right, Doug, you good with the seventh? Yep. Yep. Right. Yes. Let's do that. Five thirty workshop. Excellent. Thank you. All yeah. right. <clears throat> with that, we just need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. We adjourn. I second. Randy Dubois. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess. Aye. Doug Lutz. Aye. Jeannie Borland. Aye. Brandy Dubois. Aye. Charlene Diaz. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all and have a wonderful holiday.